The Contractor's Secret Weapon weekly podcast with your hosts, Dave Negri. This program is dedicated to helping contractors, remodelers, painters, roofers, roof cleaners, and business owners in the construction industry gain an unfair advantage over the competition. This program supplies you with information that the competition doesn't even know exists. This session brought to you by ContractorsSecretWeapon.com. Hey, this is Dave Negri with uh, Contractor Secret Weapon. Today, I have an exciting guest with us uh, today, Ty Crandall. Uh, he is an internationally known speaker, author, and business credit and finance expert. Uh, he's the CEO of Credit Suite, where he oversees the biggest business credit coaching operation in the United States. And with 16 years of financial experience, Ty is widely recognized as an authority in business and credit building, business credit scoring, and uh, business financing. He's the author of two popular books, Perfect Credit, ah, yeah, right, and uh, Business Credit uh, Decoded. <laughs> I would love to have Perfect Credit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to read the book. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, a free, uh, Ty is a frequent uh, contributor to uh, radio and uh, news shows, TV programs, and of course, tons of magazines uh, like Entrepreneur Inc. and Forbes, as well as a host of uh, popular uh, podcasts like ours uh, and the Business Credit and Finance Show. Uh, he's pretty awesome. He's got some great stuff today uh, to share with you guys. He uh, some Twitter followers, thirteen thousand YouTube subscribers, active Periscope. Man, you're a busy guy. I try to be. Yeah. I try to. So, Ty, thanks for so much for being with us today and sharing your expertise. Because now is the time for uh, small business and uh, having good credit and getting uh, the money you need to grow your business, isn't it? Yeah, it's a. It's always a good time to get money. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I felt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like money, I, and I like, but, but I like money. I don't have to pay it back. I that's the best kind of money. Yeah, but in some areas they call that theft. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they come after you. Yeah, apparently people don't like it when you take their money and don't give it back yeah, to them. Well, in some that cases, makes sense. So, how did you get all started in, in this whole uh, credit money thing for businesses? Oh, wow. You know, I uh, I actually owned a mortgage company. It was the first business I ever owned. And it was funny because at the time, you know, it was the height of the mortgage industry. And I, I really thought owning a business was easy because you, you just, you know, you couldn't fail uh, until everybody failed. And then I was one of those of everybody uh, and held on too long, ended up losing everything. And, and, you know, it really trickled over to the personal side as well because I personally guaranteed everything for the business because, oh, you know, wow. like most, most business owners, I, I just didn't didn't know there was a better way. So I would eventually move on and start a consumer credit company. And along the way, a lot of people would ask us about business credit, and I wasn't really familiar with it. So when I dug in and really discovered what it was, I was just astonished that nobody was out there you know, promoting it and talking about business credit. Um, so it just it was changed my life. I've, I've been out there ever since just you know, preaching and telling everybody that, uh, that'll listen what corporate credit is, how it works, and, uh, and teaching them how to get it. Well, that's awesome because you know we a lot of times we don't think of business credit as being uh, separate from our personal. We always, I mean, we just have that preconceived idea that it has to be combined, but it doesn't, does it? No, I mean, you know, consumer credit wasn't designed to fund businesses. You know, the, one of the core components of, of credit's capacity, and you know, our capacity on the consumer side is much smaller than the business side because businesses have a greater appetite and need for for more spending ability. You know, so business credit and corporate credit actually exist for the purpose of helping fund businesses, but it just seems like that you know only businesses that get big enough to get CFOs and financially savvy people within their organization are the ones that figure it out and know how to take the steps whereas a lot of the you know the, the people that are bootstrapping and the you know the solo entrepreneurs and the businesses in the early stages even though they can get it they're just not aware that they can right yeah and i know a lot of guys who have started businesses and go man if i've got the money i haven't got it coming in as fast as i want uh and i need to grow and i've got contracts and so they just like they would contact and get a hold of someone like you that could help them get through the the weeds, uh, let's say the weeds of getting it so that it makes sense for them, huh? 
Sure. I mean, you know, that's the thing about running a business is that, you know, every one of the biggest privately and publicly owned companies got there because they used other people's money to get there. And that's kind of the way that it is, is you could build a business and you could bootstrap it. But when you're using your profits to grow the business and pay yourself, it's a really slow process, you know, and what you could take many years to do when you have access to capital, you could do much faster. So, you know, that's where we come in or, or anybody that's looking looking for money and you know following even our training and doing it on their own to build their corporate credit um, that's what they gain is they gain the ability to access capital to grow their business to kind of throw fuel on the fire per se and expedite their actual growth wow so can any business get credit business yeah credit? It, Sure. Any business can get corporate credit. And you know, business credit, corporate credit are really one and the same thing. All you really need to get business credit is an EIN number. You have to have an entity or an established business, and that business has to have an EIN. And if you have those basic requirements, you already have the foundation where you can start uh, building credit under that EIN, just the same as you know, most of us are familiar with building a, a credit profile um, under our social. Okay, so you just said a profile. So business credit really needs a profile, and they would need their own score. So how does how do they begin the steps to do that? Well, the the main and easiest way is to you know get some accounts that report to the business credit reporting agencies, buy some things, and and pay back uh, whatever it is that you're you're buy, buying. So places like Uline and Quill and Seton, for example, these companies sell products and services that most business owners want and need. They'll give you credit even as a startup, even if you have no business credit established, and they'll give you lines of credit um, or access to credit without a personal credit check. But what's unique about them is that they report the credit as you pay those bills to the business credit reporting agency. Mm. So if you know you go to Quill buy fifty bucks worth of office supplies and then they send you an invoice and you pay that invoice, well then they report that payment of the invoice to Dun and Bradstreet, for example, and then that's how you build your credit profile. When you have about five of those total accounts reporting, then you have a deep enough and well enough established credit profile. And if you paid the bills on time and a good enough score to then start getting, you know, revolving credit at, at most major retailers you're you're familiar with, Staples, Office Depot. Yeah. You know those type of stores. Wow, because that's it's it's that's pretty amazing, you know, and I never really re- even realized that. But it's 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 as it's basically the same process as personal, but you're doing it as a business entity within itself. Well, it's exactly the same. I mean, just as you build a credit profile for your social, a business can do the exact same thing. The difference is businesses, it just happens a lot faster. You know, with consumer credit, you have to have six months worth of history for FICO to even give you a score. Whereas, you know, the business credit scoring world in six months, you're getting ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollar credit limit credit cards, you're getting fleet credit, cash credit cards. You can go through the whole process within six months. So it's much faster to do, but it's basically the same steps as what you take to build consumer credit wow that's um pretty amazing because yeah i would never have thought of that honestly because i just i get so stuck on the consumer side that you know i'm thinking about the business and i put you know the the well i put everything i can in the business but i've never really thought about the business credit and that form of of laying it out it's pretty interesting (laughs) Yeah, it is. And you know, you're not alone. I mean, I think the statistics are that over ninety percent of, of, of business owners know nothing about business credit at all. So I think that, you know, it, it's kind of one of the best kept secrets in business because, you know, so many businesses fail because they can't access capital. But what's interesting about that is they could access capital the whole entire time. They just didn't know that business credit existed to be able to take the steps to do so. Wow. Yeah, and most businesses go out of business because of the lack of funds to keep them running and and not that they're i mean some are don't make the profit but there's others that do but they don't have the influx of cash at the right time to keep things going well, that's the problem is, you know, the, the thing about money is that you don't need it till you need it. And and that's what's in, that's what's interesting. You know, owning a consumer credit company I sold years ago, you know, people ignore their credit till they want to buy a home or they want to buy a car. Then they need it. 
then they address it, and then they have many months ahead to usually fix what needs to be fixed to be able to qualify. In the business world, we don't get that luxury. What happens is an unexpected expense pops up. Your air conditioning goes out. A marketing campaign doesn't work out like you thought it was. Somebody takes off and takes your customer base. You know, Those things can put any business out of, bi- out of business completely if they don't have – um, you know, enough cash and reserves where a lot of startups just don't. So you've got to be prepared for the unexpected in business. Any seasoned entrepreneur knows that. And having access to capital, even if it's not in your bank, but having access to credit or other forms of financing to help get you through those unexpected things and, and the rough times is absolutely essential for success. Yeah, well, that's pretty awesome. Listen, okay, now here's one that I've always thought about. Um, can business... Uh, get credit without owner taking on personal guarantee. Sure, absolutely, it can. Uh, you know that's what business credit is from the foundation, from the beginning. So the minute you provide a social security number on an application, you could pretty much be assured that you're providing a guarantee, and in most cases, going to provide a personal credit check. But with business credit, if you're getting that handful of accounts we talked about, and then you move on to revolving store credit and eventually get fleet credit, cash credit cards, you can get all that credit without even providing a social security number on the application uh, and just qualifying based on the quality of your EIN credit that you're establishing using those initial vendor accounts we talked about. So not only is that not a personal credit check, but these credit accounts don't report on your personal credit reports. They report on your business, and you're not personally liable for them. So once you do that, then you know it doesn't mean you're a immediately going to start getting loans without a personal guarantee. To start getting loans without a personal guarantee, you have to have a much a deeper established credit profile because you know your credit profile has your employees and your revenues and your profits. So at loans, they start looking at that other stuff. They want longer time in business and a more well-established business and a deeper cro- profile to get loans. But it's very easy to get very high limit revolving credit accounts without a personal guarantee and without a personal credit check. Wow, I, I got to tell you a funny story, and it was kind of it was like a year ago. I mean, well, it was year 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 and a half ago. We went and buy. Uh, a new car, and so we were the first time we were going to lease it. So the guy goes, "Do you want to lease it in personal or do you want to lease it in business?" And I go, "Okay, well, tell me the difference." He says, "Well, here's my difference." And I said, "Your difference, yeah." I said, "If we do it in personal, it's going to take me about an hour and a half to uh, get you approved and everything. If we do it in your business, um, I don't have to call anybody. It's a done deal, and there's no, um, there's no per. You're not." you're not personally signing for it so if you don't like the car in six months bring it back and you don't have to pay it personally i said are you kidding he goes no i said well you don't have to i mean that that's an easy done deal just put it in my business (laughs) right well and that's the thing and you know a commercial vehicle financing that's the type of things you can get pretty quick within six months without even providing a personal guarantee without even providing a personal credit check so and and it surprises a lot of people but it shouldn't I mean you know it's just as normal for a business to have a credit profile as it is for an individual it's probably more normal um, you know considering a business has a greater ability to pay back credit than a consumer does and the reality is you know business credit's been around I don't know 40 years Years. I think their first business reporting agency was around 40 years before the first consumer reporting agency was. So as little known about uh, as business credit is, you know, it's been around for decades longer than consumer credit. Um, there's a lot more business credit profiles on, on file than even consumer credit files. So it's just – it's much bigger than consumer credit industry, um, even as little as people even know about the industry itself. That's amazing, you know, that uh... – First of all, we don't know, you know, as consumers and business owners, we really don't know too much about it because we're so been so indoctrinated on the on the personal side. And, well, that yeah. Yeah, they want you that to be that way. I mean, look, if you're willing if, – if people are in the dark and they provide a social security number to Staples and let Staples pull their personal credit report and let Staples give a personal guarantee, Staples is not complaining at all. Well, you no, know? yeah. You know, it, it, so that's the difference. You know, you go to Target and check out, and every time you check out, they offer you 20% off to get their credit card. But in the business world, they won't even mention the business credit cards without a personal guarantee because why should they if they like a world where only – only the experts and the bigger companies know enough to take the steps to get it in a world where the inexperienced novices startups are still out there, you know, giving the personal guarantee and providing the social and the personal credit check. Well, yeah, you know, and it makes sense. It's like, you know, 
there's two sets of laws, one for the informed and one for the uninformed. Well, exactly. And that's kind of the way it is in life, you know, yeah. right? I mean, it, it's, it's, it is a lot of part of what you know, and what you know can help you make a, a lot of shortcuts. And I think Warren Buffett has a quote that I would slaughter if I tried to repeat, but it's something along the line of, you know, look, you're going to learn from your mistake, or you're going to learn from mistakes, but they don't have to be your mistakes. Right. And, you know, that's why he likes to read so much is to learn from the mistakes of others so he can then apply that to his business and, and eliminate, you know, his chance of, of encountering those same mistakes. So it's the same thing in life. I mean, you know, what you know here gives you a huge advantage because if you have capital, then it, it gives you a competitive advantage. It makes you more lendable by having business credit. There's just so many uh, benefits in doing so. So we talked a little bit about the steps to build uh, business credit. A profile and score. One is to just go out and get business credit. And if it, instead of buying it personally, like so many of us do, then we would just go out and go and, you know, like Uline and some of these others and, and just do it on our business so that we can build that business credit so that when it comes time, when you get that, like now, we talked about this a few minutes ago, well, I get at least three, five emails a week on, hey, we got, we got money for you. No recourse loans, or I get phone calls. Hey, we got we got money for you. So it would be wise to be in a position to say, "Hey, I could take some of that money, huh?" Well, it depends on the kind of money and, and what you're right. using it for. I mean, uh, you know, nowadays we get so many solicitations for loans, and most of them are called cash advances. So it's very fast money to get. It's very easy money to get. It's also, in most cases, very expensive money to get. You know, mm-hmm. people can easily pay thirty to sixty percent interest on what they're borrowing, ouch. and illegally, yeah, ex- illegally out, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, that what's interesting is the business world is just not regulated like the consumer. I mean, people can pull your business credit reports without your permission. They make lending decisions based on it without even telling you they're doing so. This stuff can't happen in the consumer world because you've got laws like the Fair Credit Reporting Act that regulates it. You've got restrictions on what companies can charge in regards to APRs and interest and these type of things on home loans and etc. But in the business world, you don't have that. But even at 50%, they're still pulling your business credit and making your lending decision based on that, So, uh, amongst other factors. So having a, a well-established business credit profile and score helps because it helps you get the lower interest type financing, the, the 5, 6, 7, 8% interest rates over the 3, 4, 5, 10, 20 years that we all want versus the you know 12-month payback at 50% rates that so many people are offered nowadays. Yeah, we're, everyone's talking about you know even with the interest rates being so low, they're they're basically saying it's almost free money, but it's, there's nothing free about it. Well, there's no such thing as free money. I mean, obviously, lenders and credit issuers, you know, they all get paid based on interest points and fees. You know, even SBA loans, if you really look at points that are being charged, it's not cheap to do so. But what I'd like to say is that doesn't really matter. I mean, the cost of borrowing money doesn't matter. What matters is that you get the return on investment. I mean, if you could take a hundred dollars and turn it into five hundred, then if you have to pay the lender one hundred twenty for the hundred you borrowed, who really cares? You know, you're writing the twenty dollars off in interest, and you're getting a huge return on investment. And that's the key to what you're describing: is if you're going to go get an easy, fast cash advance, that actually makes a lot of sense for businesses that are going to immediately invest it to get a significant return but that's not the kind of money you just get to hang on to just to get through a slow season you know that'll right. that'll put you out of business so you know, having established corporate credit, it just gives you choices. It gives you the ability to walk in your bank and get a, a high limit business credit card. It gives you the ability to qualify for lower interest rate, longer term loans, where you're not pushed into a quarter when you need money to only get that high risk, high rate financing. So that's like anything else. So you're you're basically it, you you what's being made. You're in a position to take what's available to you for what you only need, not. So you get to pick and choose if you have a decent credit. Well, that's what's nice about revolving yeah. credit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when you get a loan, you know, you're going to pay the payments on the entire amount you borrow, and that's why credit lines and credit cards are are so popular. But the problem with credit lines is credit lines require really good personal credit, and they also require tax returns that show profits. And a lot of business owners are kind of conditioned to write everything off at the end of the year, so they don't have a lot of profits. And a lot of them are risk takers, so yeah. their credit kind of reflects that. And you know, what's nice about business credit is you can access that ten, twenty, thirty, forty, five. You know, fifty thousand dollar credit limit accounts, and your personal.
personal credit doesn't matter and your tax returns don't matter. So those other factors that become crucial in your ability to get a loan aren't even you know, a factor when it comes to being able to get high limit credit. So this, wow, this really opens up a whole new world to a lot of people. It really does. I mean, and and that's the that's the key. You know, the key of it all is is to have options. You know, it's just like anything else. If you don't build your consumer credit, and if it's not good, you can still get loans and credit cards. You're just going to get lower limits and much higher rates. Mm-hmm. Well, business is the same way. If you don't build your business credit, you're still able to get money. You're just going to be left with short term loans at high rates. If you build your corporate credit, then that opens up the revolving credit for you. That opens up the lower rate, longer term loans. So life is just much easier when you have access to that kind of money versus the high price money. Makes sense. It really does. Uh, so we, we talked – really, we talked about the business owner. Is there a way for someone who wants to go into business to, to get a loan as a – like, say, a new business owner? Or is that more challenging? Well, I mean, it, it, you know, when it comes to capital, there's different kinds of loans for each different group. I mean, you know, there's financing for for people that are just in the startup phase. Um, there's more financing for established businesses because, you know, look, a, a chef can be an unbelievable chef, but he could really suck at running a business, you know, and that's what a lot happens in a lot of cases is people are good at what they do. They're good at being a plumber, but they're really bad at running a business. And so, you know, having an established business where you've proven that you could do both, that you have something that people want that provides a value in their lives that they'll pay for and that you're good at the, the, the aspects of running a business, well, that the, the longer you can prove that, the more money opens up. And that's why SBA loans won't even touch you unless you have three years tax returns because before you can even get to them, you have to be in business three years to show that you know, you've know you been able to do so successfully. And if you look at the failure rate of businesses, it significantly drops off after three years. The longer a business is open, the greater the percentage that it's going to survive long term. So that you know, there's no question more financing options open up for you the longer that you're open. But with business credit, it does not discriminate. You know, a startup can get it, a very well established business can get it. It really works for everyone, whereas financing not so much. There is financing for startups, but a lot more financing for an established business. Right. So this is it's like we were just talking I just said a few this really opens up a whole new door to to a lot of things for business owners because basically you know um we have been as business owners been so conditioned to go to the bank to get money for our businesses and it's like you said if you don't need it you can get it if you need it you can't <laughs> especially from the bank but yeah. um but uh but now there's different options because you don't really need your bank to get a loan for your business. Well, that's what's interesting is you know I saw about two years ago a study by the, the Department of Revenue that showed 98% of business financing is now coming from alternative lenders. So it's interesting because we're conditioned to go to our bank when we need money for our business, but yet 98% of the money that comes gets pushed into businesses doesn't come from the big banks. And look, that makes sense. I mean, banks are government insured. Mm -hmm. So our government requires that they have focus on conservative risk and the majority of businesses fail. We know that. So inherently, business lending is just very risky. So we can't hold it against the banks that they don't want to lend into the space. They don't want to lend into the space because it's too risky for them to actually be able or be permitted to lend into the space. But SBA provides them a way to do so. SBA guarantees, you know, up to 90% of the loan in some cases. So, you know, if a, if a, if a you know, bank can lend you 100 grand and then if you default, then, you know, SBA gives them 90 of the 100. Well, the risk is so minute at that point that it gives them the ability to lend. But getting those kind of loans are so tough to do. And I always say that to people. It's, you know, look, you're a business owner. You know a lot of business owners. Everybody in your entire life that you've met, how many people have you really ever met that have secured an SBA loan. And you know, most people can't think of anybody that they've ever even met that this secured an SBA loan. That's how rare that type of financing uh, really I, is. I think I had uh, a friend who opened up a store, but I'm telling you, it was like, it was a long process. Let's put it this way. It was longer than a short sale. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> long. It's a long process. <laughs> Look, banks are, and, and it's great if you go through it. It's well worth it. You know, a buddy of mine just secured an SBA loan for his consumer credit company, and and he's, you know, it's a very rewarding thing for him to get the hundred fifty thousand he got, and the yeah. terms are great. And like I said, those are fantastic loans. 
for people that can fit the requirements. But you know, you've got to have good business credit, good consumer credit. You've got to have money in the bank. Your financials have to be straight. You have to have collateral. Most people just don't have that. And when you do, then that's a great way to go. If you don't, then it's just important to know that there's a lot of other options out there where you don't need all those things that could still get approved. That's amazing. This has really been awesome. And uh, so basically, your what you and your company do is help business owners um, get through the maze and help them get uh, set up and uh, and pointed in the right direction and, and possibly even get loans through your what you do. Is that what you do? Well, what we do is we really we're the eight hundred pound gorilla in the space of corporate credit. So. Okay. You know, we've really carved out an interesting niche doing two things. We uh, lead the way when it comes to helping people build credit for their business that's not linked to their social. Um, and then we also help people get into the business of offering business credit and financing as a service. And of course, part, a large part of what we do is helping business owners obtain capital. So we deal with all different kinds of business loans uh, to help them secure loans as a startup or a well-established business or with good credit or bad credit or with collateral, or without collateral. So that's really what we do is help them obtain all forms of capital, including corporate credit and business loans. And then if they're interested, we help a lot of people offer both as a service. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So how do our listeners get in touch with you so they can – you can help them get – Whatever they yeah, can. we they can go right to our we got our website. Our, our website's creditsuite.com. That's creditsuite s u i t e dot com. So creditsuite.com forward slash e i n. There's a great free guide that maps out in depth the steps of building business credit. So we talked about that vendor step, but there are a few other steps if you want to get you know high limit store credit accounts and cash credit accounts and things you need to do to set up your business credibly. So all that's available in a guide that I put together for the show. It's right at creditsuite.com forward slash e i n. Super, and we'll put all this in the show notes and all your contact information. It's really been awesome. I just was taking a ton of notes because, I mean, I've never really thought about it. And I've been in business 26 years. So, you know, when I think about it, I don't really think about getting the business credit. And, you know, of course, you know, my vendors and stuff, people that I buy paint and whatever from, I don't think about them as credit worthy, you know, sort of, but I guess they are, aren't they? Well, you know, listen, 97% of trade vendors don't report to the business credit reporting agencies, and that's the difference between business and consumer credit. When you get credit as a consumer, you just by default expect it to report in your credit reports. In the business world, most of it doesn't. So you have to be really intentional to build business credit, especially with vendors because most startering vendor, startup vendors, they just don't report. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can have all kinds of credit, and we hear this all the time. You know, People have been in business 5, 10, 20 years. And then they go into their bank or they do something to get money and they get denied because of their business credit quality, and that's shocking to them. And we pull their business credit reports, and we see they have a really low score because they have no credit. And again, it's a different world. In the consumer credit scoring world, you just would just not have a profile. You have no score. But in the business world, you know, if they know you exist, they'll give you a low score in like places like Experian. So you know, that it becomes an issue. You don't need it until you need it. And look, you might not need it. You know, there's a lot of business owners over there out there that like being a solopreneur. They like having a small business. They make enough money to have the life they want to have, and they never really want to grow it and scale it into something big. And that's what's beautiful about business is that we all have the ability to do whatever we want to do. We can grow it to be huge and go public, or we can keep you know, keep it small and just make the money that we want to make to spend time with our family. And, you know, that's that's the thing and have more of a lifestyle business. So it, it might not be for everybody. You know, I've got friends that are in the lifestyle business where they work hard enough so they can go to the beach and take vacations with their family all the time. And they don't want to grow to be huge. Um, but I'm still a big firm believer that anything you do, you should separate the liability and you should take advantage of every you know, uh, advantage you have and in business, corporate credit definitely gives you a huge advantage. Well, yeah. And I like the part where you said about, you know, limiting the liability because in today's world, everyone chases you as far as they can, if they can. 
Well, and they absolutely will, and they're going to go after whoever has the most assets. So right. if you personally guarantee and you personally have the most assets more than your business, they're coming after you first. Yeah. You know, they're going to go after wherever the money is, and that's the same in anything, right? I mean, you know, you're in a car accident. It's the same way insurance companies are. Who has the most money is usually who they're going to pursue first. So you know, that's where it really becomes important that uh, you build the corporate credit. You you create you know that veil, and you don't give them the ability to pursue your personal assets. That you truly separate your business and your personal liability. That makes sense to me. I'm in. Good. Can I get sign my, me up? Can I get my free money? <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, you don't even have to pay it back. You're oh, good. Right. Don't worry about it. Yeah, funny money, right? Monopoly <laughs> money. Cool. Hey, Ty, this has really been awesome, and uh, this has really been an eye opener for me, and I and I know it will be for a lot of our listeners that just like me just never thought about some of the things that that we talked about today, and I really appreciate you. Uh, taking the time and sharing your expertise, and I uh, hope that uh, you guys that are listening will uh, take uh, advantage of uh, what information Ty gave you, and if you can use him to help you get where you need to go, then by all means, do it. Yeah, and Dave, I had so much fun. Thank you so much for having me today. I really had a blast. All right, excellent. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast with Dave Negri. We would love to hear your comments about this episode, so visit us online at www.contractorsecretweapon.com and let us hear your thoughts. If you are listening via iTunes, please leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive, the more other contractors will benefit from this show. Thank you, and see you next time here on the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast.